can go ahead and get the wheels turning, buddy, on what are the objections to why you haven't started a bird dog network um, or started using some of these digital assets in order to generate leads to pump out deals and create new sources of revenue. I'm looking for the black whiteboard marker. Give me one quick second. How's everything going on your end, Bill? Hey, it's going fine. Uh, you know, there was a couple of questions that we could probably, we could push those till Monday, but there was a couple of questions. Uh, yeah, it's, all right. Specifically addressing, I think uh, it would be more pertinent to address, you know, your uh, questions and concerns. And I probably speak for a lot of people, especially people that came in at, on the technology age later on in life. You know, I mean, I've got nephews and grandsons that came in, you know, they had a computer in their room when they were, you know, still weaning on the model, right? <laughs> you know. And so, you know, technology didn't come into my life until, uh, you know, years, years later, you know, uh, you know, when it was invented. I mean, you know, the Internet wasn't invented until 1992. And then people really didn't start firing it up until the late 90s and early 2000s. And so, but a lot of young people grew up with computers and, and older people did not. So the, the issue, I think, really is for a lot of people, Gil, is they just don't understand technology well enough to be able to go through all the technology steps necessary to set up a landing page and a squeeze page and things like that. I mean, it's, it's as though, you know, you're talking to them in a foreign language. So I think that's the issue for a lot of people is that they just simply don't know how and you know, or they've tried and they've gotten stuck on some minute, minor deal because they didn't click d disable or enable on this deal, and they weren't able to do it. I mean, that's probably the biggest objection and the biggest stumbling block that most people have. And uh, okay. so I would say that's number one as far as people of my era goes. Um, it's the other people just life just gets in the way and they just don't know how to do it. And uh, because they don't, it's not really eminently clear to them. They just simply haven't taken the time necessary to make it happen. Back to you. Nice. All right. So some people are already typing stuff in there, and I think Bill, you know, a great way to sum that up is one is technology, right? Nowadays there are so many tools out there, and um, you know, I spend my time each day doing deals, looking at new marketing lead sources, checking out other tools. You know, not everybody has the kind of time or enjoys doing that kind of work. So technology is one of them. Uh, Chris McCartney says, you know, the babysitting aspect, right? They don't want to babysit them. And I think what you mean by that is, you know, them blowing up your phone and, you know, you're focusing on deals and just not enough time uh, set aside for them or the babysitting aspect, right? Uh, what else do we have here? Karen says realtors, right? So realtors can be an objection and a roadblock. <clears throat> we'll address that out here, too. Uh, time commitment, okay, so let's put time commitment. Steve, what are some objections and challenges? Why haven't you started this pipeline or what's holding you back? Yeah, I mean, just on the digital asset side, I mean, that's easy, easy for me to come up with because I've wanted to do something like this for a long time. But I mean, a lot of it for me was I didn't know what to put online, like coming up with what kind of content, you know, to, to give to people. Um, you know, I don't, I, even though I'm pretty tech savvy, you know, I don't know how to build a website or a lot of the web stuff is just way out of my, my comfort zone. Um, you know, and then just how to, how to get traffic there or, or how to monetize uh, the digital assets. You know, I, I, that's something I never knew how to do either. Okay, so uh, Yashika here talked a little bit about that too, expertise, right? Um, if you're new to the real estate investing space or just doing deals and, and, and marketing in general, right, how are you, what are you supposed to train them on if you've never done a deal before, right? So, and then for those of you that have done multiple deals, like Bill was saying, he's a seasoned investor. He's spent years, 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 decades, uh, you know, in the real estate space. And yet when it comes to expertise, how to leverage digital assets, you know, a little bit iffy there. Or, you know, just hasn't taken the time to actually get educated and, and learn more, you know, about it. After all, his passion is doing deals in real estate, so that's what he's chosen uh, to focus on. 
Uh, Karen said some want us to give them funds or payment of first. Okay, so we're taking a look at costs, right? There are people out there that's charging for this kind of information, uh, claiming to be able to train and show you how to build a bird dog network. Uh, but the, the, the fees, right, that's a big barrier to entry. Some of them have very high upfront costs. Um, but I'm actually going to show you uh, other vendors and other sources where you can get these, um, where you can get this uh, additional training expertise for minimal, if not none, right? And uh, we're actually going to be breaking that down here for you as well. Uh, and, and we'll show you where we're coming from and how we put this together in terms of uh, our expertise, our track record, and the cost that uh, it will take to tie this all in or get this pipeline open. Um, providing value, that is a huge, huge one. <clears throat> Again, how do you provide value to these people, right? If you're brand new or even if you're seasoned, what kind of value can you offer them? Um, Dave says, focus on finding cash buyers and finding properties myself. Okay, so kind of ties into expertise or the time commitment, right? Um, your focus is on doing deals, right? You want to do house deals. You want to wholesale. So you've been focusing on finding distressed sellers in real estate. But again, you can use this network to find deals, okay, to find deals and how to leverage the efforts of other people to start bringing new deals. Um, give the fund, focus on cash buyer. All right, so we've got a bunch here, and I think I have them all on there. If I missed anything, go ahead and type it in. Steve, what else can we put on there? Uh, I've got a couple of things on my list. Uh, we have a meetup group. Um, you guys know that every Wednesday night we sit down over a game of cash flow. Wednesday night I actually sat down with the investors and some of the wholesalers we had, uh, and they gave some of these objections, right? One is they don't last. People do not last, right? There's yeah, questions on motivation, one. right? How do you keep them motivated? You know, what type of training can you feed them? Can you show them? Can you give them access to so that they can work on their personal development, the type of mentality you have, um, and, and, uh, and those types of skill sets and content, right? Uh, so they don't last. Success rate. People think the success rate can be very low, and I will tackle that objection today. Uh, marketing expenses, so costs, right? Cost to build out this program, cost to design it, um, marketing costs that go into it so you can continue to create new sources of leads. Uh, training, teaching, so let's put training on here. What else, what else? Where is the return? What type of ROI can you get from it? And I'll share the results that we've got. Uh, An ongoing so support. I don't want to kind of have an idea of how much board space I'm going to need on this session. So support, uh, credibility. What else? Technology, pitch value, consistent time, content. All right, cool. So if anybody else has any objections, Jerome says, being young, 22, and not being taken seriously to do the job. I can totally relate to that, Jerome. Um, when I go into the field and meet with sellers, first time I had shown up there, um, they'd open the door, and I'd say, hey, my name is Jill. I'm the gentleman you spoke to about the property, and I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'd be interested, and you know, I'm here to take a look at the property. And they would kind of look at me and ask, okay, great, uh, is it just you? Are, uh, are your parents coming out here? Um, you know, is, uh, is your boss going to show up? So I kind of look more like an intern. And because, um, you know, I, I do look a little bit young um, when I'm out there in the field. And this was before I grew out the beard uh, and had glasses, right? I, so a couple things for me to look older, just a funny side note. Uh, I bought glasses. They had no grade. That, ha that added about four or five years look of maturity, um, but they had no grades, so those are fake glasses. Uh, and I grew out the beard, right? And um, added another five, six years on there um, so that I could look a little bit older. Uh, <laughs> but Jerome, I'm going to show you again. We're going to address that. So being too young, and it's not really such a thing. Dude, you are 22, and um, that is awesome. I wish I had access to all this stuff when I was 22. 